Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to have a different video. Yeah, we're actually going to be doing a more of a technical video today. We're going to be doing a comparison between Haltech and Holly EFI. Uh, the pros and the cons between each ECU, between the Holly Dominator and the Nexus R5. First off, the packaging from the Holly. Even though it works, hasn't changed since they came out with it. Compared to the Nexus, which to me is a nicer packaging between the two, which everything that comes with it. Uh, everything that comes with it in the box with the Holly, you're gonna laugh, but usually you just get the cord. But in this one, there is no cord. But that's all you get with the Holly. You don't get anything else. With the Nexus R5, They give you quite a bit of stuff. You get your page up for power keychain, USB cable, just like the uh, Holly. One thing that's neat is if you actually mount your ECU upside down, well now you can't see the actual sticker. So they actually have another sticker that goes right over top so actually you can see all the outputs. Another neat thing is the way the battery connections are. They use Radlock terminals which they actually connect, you hear a click, and they hold on, which is really nice. And then to release them, you just press a button on the side and they come all out. You also get stickers, the USB uh, firmware, and also this is, we'll talk about their Wi-Fi cable that goes in it also. Now that class is in session, I'm gonna go over first the Holly Dominator. So the Holly Dominator, comes with 43 inputs and 36 outputs. For people that don't know, what's an input, what's an output? An input is something that the ECU sees. If that's a five volt reference sensor, a speed sensor, anything that the ECU is seeing, trans brake input and so on. Output is the opposite. It's the ECU telling another thing to do. So basically triggering a relay, triggering another relay to turn on the trans brake and so on. So for the Holly, for the Holly Dominator, ignore my chicken scratch. The ECU, and these are all today's retail pricing, because Holly every year likes to go up every single year after holidays. 3,300 US. Then you need, as I said, the Holly comes with bare bones, nothing. You need now, the harnesses for each one. So there is multiple ports for the Holly. You have your J1A, J1B, J2A, J2B, and J3, J4, and your main power. So you need harnesses for every single one. We're gonna compare them both the same. So for all those harnesses you need, that's another $400. So that's ECU. 400 harnesses. Now you need NTK sensors because that's what the Nexus comes with. So for two of those from Holly, 320 bucks times two. Now one thing that the Holly doesn't come with that the Nexus does is traction control. I know in the latest update they did come with wheel speed now but we're gonna compare the active speed management that the Holly has that you have to unlock. That's another $500. Traction control put. Yes, in other cars we've done the front wheel speed. We've done that too, but I'm comparing them all the same. So they're roughly around the same apples to apples, oranges to oranges. Next. The Haltech can run 18 injectors. The Holly can only run eight. So to compare them the same, it needs now the injector driver, which you only can drive 16. So that's another $500. Next, G-meter. Holly does not have a G-meter built into it. Haltech actually has an IMU. That's an inertia management unit. What is that? We'll go over that later on, but it's basically six axis 
G meter is what it is. The Holly can only get the X and the Y. The X and the Y one is $340. Next will be the MSD solid state relay that you'll need. Because once again, the Holly cannot trigger anything straight from the ECU, meaning the trans brake and whatnot. So the MSD solid st state relay, the Holly will trigger it and trigger out. So that's another $200. Gives you a total now of $4,880 US. For Canadian, you're basically probably looking like 10K. So, one thing that comparable to the IMU that's in there is basically a v Davis VPS or a Davis profiler. You're looking with that for another anywhere between, for the VPS, 1,000 US all the way up to 3,000 US on top of the 4,800. Now, we're gonna talk about the Nexus R5. So the Nexus has 33 inputs and 28 outputs. So the Nexus R5. That one there for the ECU, and this includes the harness. This includes everything that you need to run the entire ECU. That one is $4,900. Right now. Now, you need, depending on which injectors you want to run, that will be another $155. And then also the NTK sensors. Funny part is, same sensors as the Holly, but if you notice, 180 to 320, the exact same sensor. Just this one says Holly on it. So now the total for all this, notice how we didn't have to have another trash control, injector, driver, G meter. Total is 5,400 USD. So now you're saying, okay, well this Lucas, this one is still more than the Holly with everything into it. Well, we're going to get into the difference between the Nexus compared to the Holly and the functions that either or can do. Now we're going to talk about the next level lower of each competitor's ECU from the Holly and Hiltech. So Holly Dominator is their elite one, their Nexus, their Holly HP. That comes with only four inputs and four outputs. Okay. ECU from that is $2,700, but that includes also the harness and one NTK sensor. Holly HP can only run one O2 sensor, Dominator can run two. To match it the same, as close as we can to the Nexus R3, you need the CanIO box, which is another $400. Once again, the Nexus R3 and R5 both have torque management built into it. We now need the active speed management on the Holly HP, which that is another $500. Need a G meter too, which that is today's pricing, 340, like I said before. And once again, you need the solid state relay, just like the Dominator. Total for that, if you can believe it, is $4,100 and change. To me, this is why their Terminator X has done so well, in my opinion, compared to the Holly HP, because the bang for the buck, in my opinion, you might as well just spend another $700, $800 and you have way more options than you do than the Holly HP. The difference though with the Holly HP is, and the Dominator compared to the Terminator, which people seem to forget, it can't run, the Terminator can't run an NTK sensor. NTK sensors 
are superior to leaded fuels and methanol. People seem to think that they can buy Terminator X and go run alcohol and stuff like that all the time. Not a chance. Even leaded fuels, over time, you're going to need a couple in the trailer because that Bosch LSU sensor will go at one point in time. Next ECU we're going to talk about is Haltech's new R3. R3 is a more budget-friendly ECU that they saw that there was a need for. When we talked to them in PRI, they saw that there was a void for that where you don't need, if someone who doesn't need as much inputs and outputs as either or the Dominator or the Nexus R5 has. So the Nexus R3, that has 17 inputs and 16 outputs. That ECU right now retail, $2,800. USD again. That includes the harness too. And then it can only run one O2 sensor, just like the Holly HP. But once again, it's only $180. Total, $2,980. So these are the four ECUs that I'm going to be comparing because these are the most close to each other between. As I said, the Terminator X, in my opinion, is more of a budget-friendly budget ECU that can't do near what these ECUs can do. So then you're probably asking, okay, which one do you prefer? I'll be completely honest, I was a Holly guy before, totally was. Why am I a Haltech guy now? Biggest thing, I got turned to it when I met Patrick a couple of years ago, Patrick Barnhill. The main thing was, he says, once you try the Haltech, you'll never want to go back to any other ECU. He's 100% right. That's exactly why. So why, though, do I like it? The biggest difference is that's a VCU now. So the biggest thing that this can do, that this can't, the outputs can actually control things. So this thing actually has 425 amp outputs. What does that mean? What that means is it can actually turn on your fan, water pump, starter, anything that's 25 amps or lower can actually control without actually having to send a trigger to a relay, fuse, and then trigger out. It also has outputs 8 amp to actually control other things that are up to 8 amps. The Holly can only do max two amps is what they recommend, even less. Even flyback voltage all the time too, even on the trans brake before, they wanted you to run a capacitor in between. The pros though between the two, first the Holly. The Holly does have more inputs and more outputs. If you need that many for sensors, you could run with this. Another thing you can run with the, uh, the Haltech if you run out, is something called the PDM. We'll get down to that also. It's a power distribution module. Also, the Holly software is easy to use. Uh, the Haltech is easy to use also. One thing that we'll go over after is the search bar, which I think is pretty neat. Um, and also the Wi-Fi connection, which is different. So the Haltech pros of that. One box controls the whole car. The Holly you need multiple boxes to run everything that the Nexus can run. Meaning, you need an injector driver, you need a G meter, you need multiple things to run everything that it, the Nexus can run, which you have to stack, which now wiring becomes an issue too. Customer service, which to me is honestly probably the biggest pro that the Haltech has compared to Holly. Anyone you talk to that has a Holly product that's tried to phone Holly, First of all, you're probably going to be on hold for 45 minutes minimum. Then you're going to have maybe someone phone you back the next day. And let alone if that person even knows what you're talking about. Haltech, I can almost guarantee you phone and they pick up the phone. Every single time. And you actually have guys who develop the software who actually understand it. Much better service goes to Haltech. Lead time. Holly's become lately very terrible on lead times where you don't even know when you're getting your product anymore. Haltech, 
Their stuff right now on the Nexus, I believe, is around six weeks. But it is six weeks. It's not going to be 12, 18, and so on from just them pushing and pushing, just giving you a date, which we've all had issues with dealing with parts lately since the whole COVID. So another positive to the Haltech. Haltech can also be Wi-Fi connected. We've tried it on the Pro Mod, and it's unreal how in time it is. There's no lag between it. Nice part is when you come back from a pass, I actually don't have to hook up a cable to the car, and it'll automatically connect to my computer, and then I can just download everything from there. The G-meter that we were talking about. So the IMU, the inertia measurement unit that the Haltech has that the Dominator doesn't, which I said you'd have to run the VPS from Davis. What is that? So that does X, Y, and Z, pitch, roll, and yaw. So you can actually have your wheelie control built into that, which that actually be added another sensor to this one too, if you wanted to, instead of running the VPS. All in one unit itself. All you have to do is calibrate it, and any way you place the ECU, once you calibrate it, then it basically zeroes out the G meter, and you can turn it on and use all your torque management and everything built off that. The PDM that I was talking about. So wait, there's more. So, Haltech came out with a PDM, power distribution module. Very small, as you can see. What is this? You can run, I believe, up to four of them if you run out of inputs and outputs with these things. This basically though is just an output device. So once again, this has four, there's so many I have to remember here. Yeah, so this actually has 10 eight amp high current outputs and four 25 amp outputs also. So the nice part about this, which is pretty neat because it runs on their CAN system. That's another thing that the Haltech is superior to Holly. I don't know why Holly's can is so secretive that they don't share with anyone. Haltech has no problem sharing it. Same thing with Motec. FuelTech's another one, and it can use with multiple products. Since that is done that way, you can't hook up other things to this that isn't Holly itself. So with this, the neat part is, so say for example, you wanna put this in your trunk. Well, how many times you've had to have your whole fuse and relays and everything, we'll just say underneath the dash. Now you gotta run a big gauge wire, because that's another thing we'll talk about later on, is resistance over length for a gauge of wire. You can literally put this, we'll just say in the trunk. Now you gotta run your four wires for the can. Once again, can high, can low, switch power and ground. So you have four 22 gauge wires going to the back, and now you have everything that you can run off the back there. So now you save on weight and the complexity of having to wire all this stuff if that's in the rocker panel or where you're gonna put it. Next, a pro for the Haltech is their can keypads. So they have two keypads that they use, two by four, three by five. So what makes these so neat and user-friendly? Well, once again, what we talked about in a video before, they run their can network. Four wires is all you have to run, which once again, can high, can low, power and ground. So what you can do is literally put these in the car, I think you can run up to three of these in the car, and you can use it to trigger the ECU to do whatever you want. Another neat thing they do, they give you a plethora of decals for anything that you are planning to use them for. Put them on it, you can make them to be momentary switches, latch switches, whatever you want. So in the Pro Mod, once again, the driver has one, and we have one on the side for all the torque management. Holly, the only way you can run a switch panel kind of like this, is you have to run a race pack smart wire, an EC master, you have to run an external PDM circuit to run all that stuff, because once again, Holly does not have that in their system. Which once again, that's not $500. You're talking thousands and thousands of dollars for those. Which once again, you need another box. Next, Haltech has three CAN networks on their ECUs. Holly only has the one. I know now with the new one, the new uh, 
uh, update they just came with, you can have the two now. So why is that a positive? Well, if you have this ECU in a newer car, well, your car runs on, we'll say, new Corvette, newer Camaro. The, the car runs on its own CAN network also. So you can actually tap into that CAN network into this ECU and use sensors off that. Where with the Holly, you can't do that. Another one, the wiring harness that comes from Haltech compared to Holly. Haltech has all Deutsch connectors, where with the Holly, they're all Metropac connectors. They're both fine, but if you need to remove, if anyone's ever tried to remove a Metropac connector before, it's very, very easy to damage the tanks. With the Deutsch, it's very easy to remove. You have the tool, it goes in and out, no problem. Okay, next we're gonna go over, lastly, the software between the two. Holly just came out with their new V6 software which finally you can test outputs. All these other ECUs could do it for years. Holly finally can do that, so that's another positive. One thing though on their software, I will agree, it is user friendly. There's lots of tech videos from guys online. There's certain ones you need to watch for and certain ones I would suggest not to. And so there's, and majority of the ECUs everywhere will be Holly. Holly, in my opinion, the reason why they've been so superior is they have an a la carte system. So you think an ECU, oh, I'm just going to go EFI, it's only going to be $3,300. Not a chance. Once you buy it, like as I said, we went through, everything costs on top, on top, on top. And if anyone's ever gone to an a la carte restaurant, it's never cheap. I'd rather just pay once, cry once with the Haltech. They charge you the one time, and that's when you get, you know what you're getting with everything. So with the Holly, this is their program. I just have a generic global file opened up. Everything is pretty easy to go through between the fuel map, and your sensors, and your EFI configuration, your IO, your pin map, and so on. Then you have your advanced tables, like everyone's known, and whatnot. So, it is pretty easy to learn and use now that the data, also their data logger, he has a search function, finally. That was another thing that I'm surprised took this long. But um, that's one thing I would say is their software is pretty easy to use. Haltech, first thing that is easier in my opinion, the search bar. Holly, as I just said, has it only in their data logger. So this is pretty neat that if you don't know where something is, if you're new to this, you're trying to look through here, where is this, where is this, I don't know. So we'll just say, for example, that I don't know where my fuel map is. Well, so I'll just type in fuel. Well, as you can see, it brings up everything fuel here listed, my fuel system, fuel pressure, and so on. Everything is here within the fuel where you can just find stuff, it's much easier compared to having to scroll through, where is this, where is that. You also can set a favorites tab up top here where you can actually pick, say if you always wanna look at your fuel tuning, that's what you can look up there all the time. So you can look at your stuff uh, when it comes back from a pass. We'll go through that when we're at the racetrack of what I like to look at when we come back from a pass. Another thing which is very superior on the Hall Tech compared to the Holly is the aisle report. Well, Lucas, that's the same as the Holly. No. So when you click it, you'll see, once again, search bar and every single time they have, but you'll notice these wire colors. Every single one. This wire color corresponds to the actual harness that they sell. Well, why does that matter? There's been times when we've had to search on cars a wiring issue, well, we can actually trace if there was a fire, if there was a cut in the line, anything like that. So that's pretty neat that everything corresponds. The Holly does not have that. You have to have the actual layout printed beside it. This is always with it. So each car, the nice part is, you'll see this printout report. It literally will print out everything as you're seeing it right here. So I can have it at the racetrack. Customer can have it and it's much easier for them 
to keep track of everything. You can actually here, so see it says show all connection types. You can hit show assigned. So now it'll only show everything that is assigned, show that it's available. So you see here, uh, this is analog voltage input. So that's basically your five volt reference sensors, your DPO, that's yeah, your digital pulse output, synced output, how many are left here? This is the program from our uh, ProMod. Half bridge, half bridge basically has to do with your uh, drive-by wire. Ignition, that's another thing that the Haltech can do that I never mentioned. It can actually run a V12. So that's another superior thing that it can run 12 ignition coils. Another neat thing that they have is these tabs up here you'll see. So with the Haltech, they have a data logging software too that you can run. I'll be honest, I never use it. I like using this because I have my map built into my data logger all the time. So we'll just say for example here, where you can actually add, see so here, add new page. They actually have pages that are loaded on their updates from you whichever ones you want. So drive shaft, EGT playback, engine curve, and they're all laid out for you. So we'll just pick one even though I have them on there. So engine curve playback, we'll click it there. So this brings up here our positions that we have on the race car, on our CAN keypad. Then it has race time, RPM, torque management, or all my targets. When we're at the racetrack, we'll go through what actually all this is when it comes back. But that's another neat thing that the Haltech has that the Holly, you have to load all your pages. And yes, you can move stuff around. It's another neat thing. So say I don't want Lambda here, right? Okay, I just want to remove this one here. Okay, I don't want this Lambda here when I'm looking at my stuff. Fine, it's moving away from this. Say I want to add some stuff here. So you can add anything here. 2D view, 3D view. So we'll just say 3D view of my base fuel tuning if you want. I wouldn't want that, but you can just add a bunch of things and move stuff around how you want to configure your whole page when you actually are looking at your data. The Wi-Fi connection. This here is where you actually can be connected via Wi-Fi. You hit that and it connects to the computer. You're wondering, oh, anyone can tap into my car whenever they want. No. Another thing with the Haltech is sensors. So big thing is when setting up any ECU is programming the sensor. So we'll say for example, we want to put coolant pressure on there. So big thing is if you just notice there, this went red. Well, why did it go red, Lucas? Well, one thing that is pretty neat with the Haltech, the Holly does it sort of just when you save it or X out. It'll throw engine codes, which is actually what you'll see here where it's telling me to stop and show my errors. So you have your engine codes, your caution. So here when I hit it, it's going to tell me that my coolant pressure has not been configured yet. So we'll just say, for example, here, this is set up, we'll say like a low dollar sensor, your 0.5 to 4.5 volts, 0 to 150 PSI. Neat part is now if I, you have a bunch of 150 pressure sensors on the car, you can save it and say if you want to put low dollar, 150 PSI and save it. Well, now that's in there. So when we go, I'll show you that you can actually load the file. So if you want to hit here and you just hit and you go down, low dollar, there it is. So you can just click on it. You don't have to configure every single time. Just like while Holly will load certain sensors every update, but you have to wait for those updates all the time. This also will detect updates just like a normal computer does when Haltech actually has updates. You don't have to look to see if there's updates where Holly every single time it's this big thing that oh they have a new build out, oh they have new stuff. Well why don't you just have to do an update and just who cares and just do it. Every single time it needs to be this big grand opening that they've done for you. So the wiring, another neat part is compared to the Holly, when you assign it you actually just have to pick a certain one. Meaning with the, Hall, with the Holly, there's only so many thermosistor inputs they have, so many digital inputs they have, not the Haltech. You can literally can use any single one you want for this one here, and then your sync pulsed inputs, which is your drive shaft and whatnot, for that. So you just literally can click on it, boom. And then if you need to pull up resistor, 
You just hit that there too. You don't need to wire in a pull-up resistor like you do with the Holly. So now AV7, which on our actual plugins, which they make it very easy instead of a bunch of uh, about numbers and letters, it's ABCD is what they have for their plugin. So you see here it's C16. That's where I know my pin is. Packaging between the two, the Holly comes with their packaging that they've had for many years. The one thing though is the weight between the two, which we were very surprised. Holly Dominator, 5.4 pounds. The Nexus, 3.4 pounds. I know two pounds isn't much, but as you know, these guys just came up with the red one to say that they're ultra lightweight. Well, why do you gotta come up with another ECU just cause it's lightweight? Why didn't you just have that from the original ones? So which one would I go with? Well, if you haven't been paying attention to this whole video, obviously the Nexus Haltech is by far the winner compared to the Holly. I would throw the Holly, but you won't be able to get it. And uh, big shout out I wanna give to Sheldon at Motion Performance because we couldn't get one of these and he had one sitting on the shelf and let us borrow it for the video. So thank you to you, Sheldon, for letting us borrow it. I would go with the Nexus, like I said, for the multiple reasons. If you forget them, rewind and take a little look-see again. But we will show this ECU in action, VCU as they like to call it, um, in the coming weeks when we're actually gonna go out testing soon and actually show how this unit actually works, like uh, the uh, data logging and how we use it in the, our everyday world at the drag strip. So once again, thanks for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too boring. It's a little different for you guys compared to the usual videos. And uh, we'll see you later.